All right, now we're up to viral skin disease. So we went fungal, autoimmune, bacterial, now we're up to viral. So the first viral infection we're talking about is herpes simplex. It's an oral genital infection. You've probably seen it, hopefully not in first person. Multiple painful vesicular lesions are characteristic of herpes. And here it is. Here are those multiple painful vesicles. When the vesicles are clear, there's no testing needed. We know what's up. The next question is going to be, well, when do you start therapy? The question is, what therapy? Well, first of all, it's going to be acyclovir, famacyclovir, or valacyclovir. And the beautiful thing about it is, efficacy of all three is equal. So the point is this. If you see vesicles, you start treatment. doesn't matter which one you pick. Job done. Now, vesicles can be other things as well. But remember, the only other thing you're going to see that's sort of vesiculated like this could be on the legs, could be somewhere on the body, is dermatitis herpetiformis. That's associated with celiac disease. The topical therapies for herpes infection are completely useless. They don't help at all. Only oral therapy helps. Now, if the roof of the vesicle happens to come off when there's genital lesions, then diagnostic tests may be necessary because you can go ahead and distinguish herpes from other ulcerative genital lesions because without the roof of the vesicle, it's just an ulcer. And so therefore, the best initial test is a Zenk prep. The most accurate test is going to be basically a viral culture. Now, a Zenk prep is basically like a pap smear. You swab the tissue that's obtained, you put it on a slide, and you fix it to identify multinucleated giant cells. Because remember, the only thing about that's problematic here is you can't tell what type of herpes, but you can simply tell there's herpes. Now, the Zenk prep is being sort of phased out because nobody wants your doctor to go up to you with a scalpel and unhinge a painful lesion on your penis. And so therefore, the most accurate test is now going to be viral culture. The advantage of viral culture is no sharp objects near, you know. And the other thing is, is that it tells you what specific organism it is and even sensitivities. And so remember, herpes virus is fast growing, and so therefore will be the viral culture. The boards do not test dosing, but they will test route of administration. That is a clue for all board exams for the rest of your life. Now, shingles. Shingles is varicella zoster virus. It's basically when infections have reactivated, but they're along the dermatolo distribution. Remember, zoster virus is hanging out somewhere in your nerves waiting for you to get superiorly immunosuppressed or super stressed out or have recent surgery and it's going to just jump out and get you and it's going to present as multiple vesicular lesions along a dermatomal pattern it starts itchy and then it gets very very painful the immunocompromised those on prednisone are the ones who are most adept at getting it and here it is that looks just simply painful in and of itself just look at that thing it's your skin is inflamed. Now that's a herpes zoster, excuse me, uh, zoster along the dermatoma pattern. But you can also have zoster ophthalmicus where it occurs along the dermatoma pattern on your face. This is dangerous because you can also get keratic lesions of the cornea. Here's another patient who has a zoster-like lesion on the anterior dermatomes. If the vesicles are clear, no further testing. They're unhinged. The next step of management is going to be to treat to start acyclovir, famcyclovir, valcyclovir. They're all equal in efficacy. Topical therapy is useless. Sound familiar? When doing a diagnosis, Zenk prep and viral culture are the best initial and most accurate tests. It helps you differentiate between varicella zoster and herpes simplex. The dosing of the meds are actually higher with varicella. The culture takes longer. And vaccinations of all patients above the age of 60 are given zoster vax to prevent reactivation. It's a lot of information, but again, herpes, zoster, same meds, same ways to diagnose, different presentation, only difference is you get a zoster vax vaccine to everybody over the age of 60. Now, steroids do not decrease the risk of post-herpetic neuralgia. This is a very common misconception. Steroids don't help in this. And so therefore, giving somebody steroids after having a zoster breakout may only cause more zoster. Now remember, herpes zoster is a term that's synonymous with shingles. They can actually use the term shingles. Acyclovir, valcyclovir, famcyclovir, all three are equal except dosing. There's no difference in efficacy. And here's the thing. By treating them early with these medications with oral therapy, you can actually decrease the risk of herpes zoster-related pain. 
If they get it along the face, you can actually prevent them from having severe trigeminal neuralgia later. Who are you going to give IV therapy for? Well, IV therapy is for people who have disseminated disease, like herpes in the lung or liver, ocular disease, or central nervous system involvement, or anybody who's immunocompromised with greater than one dermatome being involved. Again, there is no role for steroids and shingles. It doesn't help anything with pain later. And if you get that viral culture back and it shows acyclovir resistance, you're going to switch to foscarnet. Prevention of this is done as following. Remember, all patients over the age of 60 get varicella vaccine. It helps prevent shingles. It's the same vaccine used in children, except it's a higher dose for adults. And it reduces the risk of developing shingles in this person's lifetime by almost two-thirds. Therefore, it is definitely something to be done. <clears throat> so, a pregnant nursing student comes after she discovers that a patient recently developed chickenpox the day after she was in his room. Lesions were not present on a day she was in the room. She did not touch the patient, but was in the room for nearly an hour. She just never had chickenpox as a child, and her varicella antibody is undetectable, and she's preggers. What is the most appropriate action in this case? This is a question that we're putting in this actual course here, because this happens more commonly than you think. The answer is as follows. You have five choices to pick from. A, no action required. B, varicella vaccine. C, give varicella immunoglobulin now and varicella vaccine after delivery. Give varicella immunoglobulin now or varicella immunoglobulin and varicella vaccination now. The answer is follows. You're going to give varicella immunoglobulin now and vaccination after delivery. Immunoglobulin now, vaccination after delivery. Why? Because you need to give her immediate immunity right now to fight off the actual varicella that may be in her. And then after delivery, you want to be able to immunize her long term. Remember, healthcare workers are supposed to be screened for varicella and vaccinated if they're not immune. Because we get exposed to it more commonly than the rest of the populace. Now, what are some complications of shingles? Well, first of all, you can develop post-herpetic neuralgia. You're going to see this in 60% of the, 70% of those above the age of 60. That's why we actually give them the vaccine at 60, so we prevent the 70% of people getting this. Bacterial superinfection can occur if they itch a lot. You can get Bell's palsy with seventh cranial nerve palsy. Now, the post-herpetic neuralgia can be extremely difficult to treat. The medications that work well are pregabalin, gabapentin, or lidocaine patches. And the alternative is tricyclic antidepressants, opiates, or capsaicin cream. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of our viral skin disease section. I'll be back in the next one when we talk about sex, baby. I'll see you then.